Hi everyone, so I'm having a little bit of wireless con connection problems or something, so if I lose you, I will reconnect again as soon as I can. Um, wanted to touch base with you after our last chat. Um, we talked about hormones and teens, so I want to finish that off and start leading into now, um, you know, going further into the lifespan. So, <clears throat> Thank you for all the amazing comments you guys left. You guys have been super supportive. Apparently some of you found it helpful in understanding your teens. So I'm grateful for all the shares and comments. But now I wanna sort of progress. What happens when hormones go wrong? And then we're gonna go into, you know, further into the developmental cycle into the lifespan. So um, we talked about how difficult it can be, how challenging it can be if everything is good. If teens are, have to have normal, um, you know, development, normal brain, you know, development and growth or hormones are not going too crazy. And yet it can still be such an, you know, very difficult, challenging time for teens. And we talked about that. So now let's talk about how much worse and how much harder it can be if they go wrong. But the reason I want you to listen to this is because this can affect you for the rest of your life. It can affect you into your adult years. And some of you actually suffer with some of this stuff. And so I want you to be able to um, understand because for me this was extremely eye-opening it's very personal to me I told you before I'm not a hormone expert but I take this very personally because it was personal I did a ton of research I have tons of friends in this field because I searched it out I sought it out and so um, I can you know help you with some really good books to read things like that and where to look for some help we actually have one hormone expert here um, I have several friends who are really really great in this field and I've just done a ton of a ton of research so <clears throat> funny story I was talking to my daughter about their sex education class in school and she thought it was hilarious and a little frustrating at the same time because when they started talking about the differences between boys and girls the boys all raised their hand and went we're going on strike why should we have to listen to all of this because ours was so simple like our lesson was super simple and the girls are like way too complicated this is not fair we why should we have to learn all of this stuff about girls when th they should have to learn all that like where's ours is like super easy and they had one little tiny section of the of the glasses um, because boys are a lot easier Girl, there's a lot more that can go wrong with a girl's body because we reproduce so um, you know we're, we're responsible for that baby bearing and so Did I lose you? Hopefully you're back. Um, so our bodies can be, you know, more challenging. Um, there's a lot more room for, um, you know, things to go a little haywire. So this happened to me and it explained a lot to me in my adult years when I finally understood. I looked back at my life and went, oh my gosh, that explains so much. So hopefully this will help you too. So um, interesting that girls' bodies are so much more complicated. Girls get depression and anxiety far more than boys do. Uh, because of the way that our hormones are and our bodies are um, during the adolescent years and yet boys go to jail 14 times more often than girls do yikes right so when things go wrong it can be very significant very serious because of things like when hormones go wrong and you add things like ADD or you know um, depression bipolar disorder schizophrenia then it's sort of a recipe for disaster if you don't know what you're looking at and you can't help your teens through this time and you don't get it properly assessed so that's one of the reasons we really want you to pay attention to this it's just really important um, so girls tend to have more anxiety than boys do they have more depression and more anxiety and that anxiety keeps them from doing things that would get them in as much trouble or get them arrested so that's one of the reasons um, but girls when their hormones go wrong something that happens they can go get something called polycystic ovarian syndrome that's what I want to talk about today um, it's really important to know and really important to know what to look for so I ended up finding out I had this and had no idea because I didn't have the normal symptoms so what are the normal symptoms poly ovarian um, polycystic ovarian syndrome is when the cysts on your ovaries are, are immature they're abnormally developed they fill up with fluid instead of having a normal cycle uh, menstrual cycle you will not have one you'll like you'll have maybe one occasionally but mostly those cysts fill up with fluid and they just don't really do a whole lot they're just very immature so what ends up happening this whole it's like a, it's a syndrome because you're uh, you release more androgens so your testosterone can go up high it causes an irregularity in blood sugar regulation so you're more insulin resistant and prone to diabetes you also um, tend to have weight gain or obesity. You can actually become very obese. Uh, 
Um, and then, hold on a second, I'm going to back this up a little bit. Um, so, I'm just hoping you can see this. Okay, uh, facial hair is another sign. Um, you'll get facial hair, hair on your face, your back, you know, places you don't want it, but the hair on your head can thin and you can actually get bald spots. So sort of like male traits, you'll get male traits with that high testosterone. Um, but not the good male traits. Like now in my case, I did not get diagnosed because it was masked. Um, for years it was masked with um, birth control pills and that's what I wanna point out. And then I had high testosterone, but I didn't have the facial hair and all the other stuff. I was pretty lean. I was on the really lean side from working out. Didn't have that part. So you can, it can be masked and I want you to pay attention. It's not always very stereotypical. So know that and know going in. Um, acne is a big one. So you want to pay attention. I actually thought I was going into early menopause. My face was breaking out. I was 39 years old. I'm like, what is going on? And when I went in, she's like, you've had polycystic ovarian syndrome for years. Somebody should have treated you. You're insulin resistant. You have um, high, you know, my cholesterol was all out of whack, even though I was super lean and super thin. And she's like, yeah, it doesn't matter. And so it explained so much to me because you have trouble, um, you're, you're, you have high drive, high motivation, trouble settling down trouble committing, trouble like being relaxed. And so that testosterone gives you this crazy sort of drive. Um, fertility problems, I had that. So um, that should be one of the big signs. It can cause fertility problems. Um, mood and mental health, this is a very big one. Polycystic ovarian syndrome. Is it polycystic ovarian syndrome that leads to the problem or is it just sort of a combination of problems? I'm not 100% sure. What I do know is people can be misdiagnosed with things like bipolar disorder. They can tend to get very depressed and very anxious. You'll have these highs and lows. So it can be a problem because you can get misdiagnosed or you'll be diagnosed with something. Maybe you do have some of those traits, but it'll be exacerbated and ramped up with the, um, the imbalance in hormones. Hopefully that makes sense because when your hormones get out of whack, when a woman's testosterone is too high, it throws everything off. It also sets you up for heart disease. So that um, the imbalance, you know, having your cholesterol panel be that messed up having your triglycerides too high, you start making the wrong kind of cholesterol, the, the small dense particles which lead to heart disease. So all of this stuff can be a big problem and it also increases your risk of hypertension. So it sets you up for obesity, diabetes, heart disease, fertility problems, lots of bad stuff. And the acne alone is just miserable. So, um, so you need to know what to look for. And one of the reasons I wanna point this out here is because a lot of teens, we have, we're seeing this huge increase in girls that have it but sometimes they're not diagnosed really early. And so if your teen does, if their cycles don't regulate within, they usually say give it two years, but if they're not regular within two years, they're having problems, they're still breaking out in spite of eating really well, um, they're having trouble with weight gain in spite of exercising, then you might wanna get it checked, okay? So um, I'd really recommend it because it can save them a lot of heartache from uh, some of the problems that normally will happen with this. So, um, Let's see, what did I wanna point out with this? So, um, yeah, depression, anxiety, obesity. Uh, so one of the things that you I wanna point out, and I am not gonna talk about how it's treated because I'm not a doctor. You need to talk to your doctor about that or a hormone specialist, but I will tell you what is sort of common. Um, all of the hormone specialists that I know will recommend lifestyle as one of the main parts of treatment. Not the only part, but one of the main parts of treatment. They really emphasize cutting out sugar and simple carbs. Absolutely cutting out sugar and simple carbs. Um, interestingly, when boys eat a lot of sugar, it decreases their testosterone. When girls eat a lot of sugar, it can actually increase testosterone in things like polycystic ovarian syndrome, very strange. <clears throat> so cut out sugar, start, start exercising. Low carb diet, fish oil is, you know, usually the right supplements, things like fish oil. Um, NAC has been shown to help, ALA. Um, to just, just not to um, get rid of the polycystic ovarian syndrome, but to support that metabolism and blood sugar regulation. Um, and you want to make sure that everything else is in balance, things like magnesium and chromium. And um, then you want to make sure they're sleeping. So things like for sleep, melatonin, because sometimes you won't sleep right. That's where that bipolarish type, you know, that, that anxiety can affect you. And then here's when it comes to medications, this is where you need to talk to your doctor. Um, metformin has been the standard sort of... Um, you know, one of the medications to treat it. Metformin really helps. Not only does it decrease testosterone and like get women regular and clears up acne and gets those cycles regular, um, but the other one, which is really common with really young girls is they get put on 
oral contraceptives. This isn't the format for me to tell you which one's right and which one's wrong. I'm just gonna say be careful and do some research and make sure you talk to the right person about which one to do. Okay, I, I, being on hormones long term may be something you wanna think about, but at the same time, some doctors get nervous about putting um, teenagers on metformin, making them really regular and clearing up the problem because then they increase the risk of pregnancy if your teen is sexually active. So not my place. You guys need to have that talk with your teens and with your doctor. But those are typically the two things that are often used, are oral contraceptives and metformin. Um, so talk to your doctor about that. Um, figure out which one works you know, for you. And they're gonna emphasize lifestyle. So what you can do is weight control, um, exercise, get them into some kind of sport, cut out those, you know, that sugar and those simple carbohydrates, um, the supplements we just talked about and the medications and really educate your teens, like really talk to them about if they're having depression, they're having anxiety, you see some abnormal things like they're not regular, um, but their mood swings are not just regular, say PMS. Don't just assume that there's something seriously like horribly wrong with them. Um, but doing things like drugs and drinking can increase the risk of mental illness when you've got all these other things going on. So they need to know that. That's why educating them is so important and talking to them openly. Um, you know, the risk goes up for mental illness during adolescence for things like schizophrenia, bipolar, depression, anxiety, suicide, homicide. I mean, all those things go up. And if they're drinking and doing drugs and they already are vulnerable with other problems, that's where the, you know, that's where it becomes really scary and sort of dangerous. So it's called a dual diagnosis. You can actually like flip them over into something much worse. So them knowing that might be enough to give them appropriate anxiety about the right things as opposed to that anxiety that's just sort of messing up their lives. Um, so I hope that was helpful. PCOS affects women. I was 39 when I was diagnosed. Would have explained so much and helped me so much if I had known that when I was younger um, with just the fertility and the acne alone, right? So those types of things can be really frustrating to a young girl. Um, so just know that and if you've had problems with like those highs and lows, get your hormones checked. I really, really strongly suggest it. Um, a lot of great people out there really who understand it and you don't have to do hormone therapy, hormone replacement therapy, I'm a huge fan, but that's my own personal preference. There's lots of natural things you can do as well. Okay, hope you guys have a great day.